It's time once again for... Sorry to barge in. No, don't get up. Mark Webb, Knowledge Investigator? Yes, but I've never had anybody actually come into my office before, Miss... My name's not important. You can call me Barista. But I have a question. No, a problem. All the pro- all the coffee in this world today, and they're ruining it. What do you mean? Everywhere I go. Blonde roast, light roast, light blonde, it all tastes like a melted crayon. The only blonde I want to experience is Charlie McDonald. How can I indulge my taste for something rich and strong enough to taste? All right, I think I have some ideas. Do you want to come along, or do you want to wait for a call, or...? Get back to me. I have some important MacGuffin hunting to do. Journey through all of human knowledge and see how it's all related as you follow the adventures of the man with the action-packed brain case, America's fabulous freelance knowledge investigator. Yours potably, Mark Webb. Coffee has been important to humans ever since animal herders in Africa first ate berries from the wild plants. The drink made from the dried, roasted, and ground beans took Europe by storm in the 1600s. As popular gathering places, coffee houses served as exchanges for news, politics, stock transactions, and even insurance. Sometime in the mid 20th century, American coffee became bland and weak. I wonder if people just didn't know the difference after the deprivations of World War II. Fortunately, in the early 1970s, a culture emerged on the West Coast that appreciated well-roasted and well-brewed coffee. As the trend spread eastward, people began to explore more exotic preparation methods to maximize coffee flavor. But in the early years of the 21st century, politics began to change coffee back. Since a major corporate chain tended to roast its beans dark, people began to rebel against dark coffee as a protest. Little did they know that, since lightly roasted beans contain a higher water content, they're heavier, and increase corporate profit with every pound sold. My client did not like the flavor of the lighter roasts, but since their popularity was increasing, she found it harder to find the darker roasts she preferred. Stop me if you've heard this before, but the only sure way to get what you want is to make it yourself. She would have to roast her own coffee. Step one is to choose a source of unroasted coffee. Not many people have a retail source for green coffee beans nearby, so you'll probably need to order them and wait for delivery. One reliable source is Roastmasters, they sell roasted and unroasted beans and equipment for roasting and brewing. Since they are located relatively close to me, delivery is quick. Sweet Maria's is another great resource. Besides beans and roasting equipment, they provide a wealth of information about roasting, brewing, and tasting coffee. They refer to themselves as a coffee university. These aren't by any means the only resources out there, they're just ones that I like. Next, you'll need to select a method of applying heat to roast the beans. To get started with things you might already have lying around, you can use a cast iron pan and a heat gun. It takes some patience, and you might have bits flying everywhere, but lots of roasters have cut their teeth this way. This is my version of a camp stove coffee roaster once featured in Make Magazine. You can order a specially made coffee roasting drum to fit your countertop rotisserie oven. So many choices. 
A snack might help. Of course! How could I forget? The hot air corn popper is one of the easiest ways to begin roasting coffee. Let's give it a try. By now, your beans have arrived. You should consider a Brazilian variety when you start roasting, as this coffee can handle many different levels of roasting from light up to dark and still taste good. Try to select a popper with a high enough wattage, 1200 or more, to roast your beans well. Also, pick one with a flat-bottomed chamber that blows hot air in sideways. Otherwise, the popper will simply blow your beans straight out. Air poppers aren't foolproof. Some don't get hot enough to make beans dark, especially if purchased secondhand. A cool ambient air temperature can also prevent dark roasting. If you want light coffee, this isn't a problem. But to guarantee you can reach a sufficiently dark roast, I developed a hybrid method. After your beans reach the first crack in the hot air popper, you can transfer them to a cast iron pan and continue the roast that way. The exhaust fan on your stove will never be able to remove all the smoke that roasting creates. So one sure method is to put a box fan pointed out in a nearby window. The capacity of this machine is half a cup, and you should also not use less than that since you need to make sure that the hot air fully contacts the beans. After handling unroasted beans, always wash your hands before touching food since the beans may contain some residual bacteria. You'll need a bowl handy, and you'll see why in a minute. It's a good idea to record impressions about various times during the roast for future reference. Finally, plug in your popper and begin your roast. After about a minute and a half, you'll start to see the dried husks of the beans, called chaff, flying out from the popper into your bowl. This means you won't have to remove the chaff before brewing. It's one of the best features of the air popper. After about four minutes, you'll get an interesting grassy aroma as the water boils off the beans. After about five minutes, when all of the chaff has been expelled, you'll hear a series of sharp cracks. This stage is called the first crack. When the first crack stops, the coffee is roasted and could be ground and brewed at any time. Any additional roasting is a matter of how you want your coffee to taste. Now, I'll show you my hybrid method for moving us through the second crack. Get your burner going. And then transfer your partially roasted beans into the cast iron pan. It's important that the pan be cast iron because nothing else distributes the heat quite as evenly. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to hear what's called the second crack. These are smaller, sharper, and after a while, faster sounds than the first crack. This sounds much more like popcorn popping. You'll also see the beans start to smoke a bit. At this point, you should move them around and don't let the beans stand still for too long. As you roast them, they'll slowly get darker and darker. More smoke will come out as the oils caramelize. When you're experimenting with the roast level that you like, you might want to cut it off here, and then, if it's not dark enough, roast further the next time. See how the beans are jumping? And the oil is starting to migrate to the top? See how some of them are shinier? That's a good sign. We're getting close. The great thing about this method is the air popper already removed the chaff from the beans, so there's nothing flying around my kitchen or getting caught in the fan, except the exhaust smoke. 
This method does not roast the beans completely evenly, but in a sense that adds more complexity to your flavor. Some of the beans will be roasted very dark, some of them will be a little less dark. And that adds a complexity. It's a nice feature. The final critical step is as follows. When the roast has reached the point where you want it to stop, you need to cool your beans quickly. Turn on your fan, put the beans into some kind of metal mesh container, and place that on your stove's exhaust fan. This will draw air through the beans and cool them and fix them at that level of roast. If you let them continue without the forced cooling, they'll coast a little bit. The temperature will keep going up and they'll get darker and darker. After roasting, you should wait about a day before grinding and brewing. This will give the flavors a chance to settle out while still tasting really fresh. If that didn't satisfy my client's wish for something deep and dark and delicious, I don't know what would. Well, Mr. Webb, I'm not the type of woman who buys popcorn poppers, but maybe I can get someone to pick one up and bring it over. Thank you. End of investigation. End of report. Remarks? Roasting coffee at home fits into the lifestyle that I advocate. It's more trouble than simply buying roasted coffee, but I firmly believe that the results justify the trouble. I caution you, though. It will spoil you. You'll find it harder to be satisfied with any coffee you can buy when you're out and about. And even if you don't roast your own all the time, understanding the process will help you to judge commercial coffee better and to develop a discriminating palate. So go transfer some heat. Yours potably, Mark Webb.